Hi, and welcome to this Saturday's edition of Debate FM. Today, we're revisiting the Huxley Wilberforce debate. Our guest speakers are writers from Macmillan's Magazine and the Athenaeum. Jeanette, who is representing the Athenaeum Magazine, is going to discuss the proceedings of the debate. But firstly, who were Wilberforce and Huxley, and was it actually a debate? Professor Thomas Henry Huxley was an English biologist, anthropologist, and philosopher. He was widely known as Darwin's bulldog because he defended Darwin's theory of natural selection throughout this famous debate. He was awarded the highest honours then open to British men of science and was elected fellow of the Royal Society in 1851 and the following year awarded the Royal Medal. He was even known as the premier advocate of science in the 19th century for the whole English-speaking world. Bishop Samuel Wilberforce, on the other hand, was a religious Oxford bishop who was ordained as an Anglican priest. He was also a fellow of the Royal Society, but was more importantly the vice president of the British Association for the Advancement of Science, whereby this very meeting erupted into the debate that took place on the 30th of June, 1860. Now over to Jeanette, who's discussing the content of the debate. The Athenaeum published many journalists' reports of the proceedings of the British Association throughout three issues of the magazine. So basically, Huxley was pro-evolution and defended Darwin, whereas Wilberforce was pro-creation and argued that Darwin's theory was scientifically inaccurate. It's important to note that there were two other key figures in the debate, Joseph Hooker and Richard Owen. Sources commonly stated that it was Hooker rather than Huxley who defended evolution in the face of Wilberforce's religious back- backlash. Uh, Owen and Wilberforce sided together against Hooker and Huxley. Wilberforce was making three points. First, that over the course of human history, there was no evidence of any new species developing, which, he, which was wrong. However, he accurately stated that selective pressures, while admittedly having an effect, did not cause a change of species. And thirdly, that the phenomenon of the sterility of hybrids meant that there were a fixed number of species. Obvious changes in the phenotype are less significant than Darwin claimed, and species are genetically much more stable than he had supposed. Professor Huxley defended Darwin's theory from the direct charge of it being merely a hypothesis. He said it was an explanation of phenomenon in natural history. Darwin's theory was an explanation of facts all supporting his theory. Without asserting that every part of the theory had been confirmed, he maintained that it was the best explanation of the origin of species which had yet been offered. Now let's open the lines up to the public. Call up if you have an opinion. Who do you think won the Huxley Wilberforce debate? Hi Debate FM, I love listening to your broadcasts, but Huxley was undeniably victorious. How can you protest such a thing? He was the most popular speaker of the day, not Wilberforce. Okay, next caller. I don't agree with the previous callers. I think she needs to get her facts straight. First of all, Wilberforce won the debate. He even had scientific evidence that disproved Huxley's argument. Now, to probably the most controversial saying of the day, when Thomas Henry Huxley was asked by the Bishop of Oxford whether he preferred to think of himself descended from an ape on his grandfather's or his grandmother's side. What do you think, Mary from Macmillan's Magazine? Hi, Mary here from Macmillan's Magazine. Thanks for having me on the show. I personally think that the Bishop Wilberforce dug himself a hole in saying that. I think Huxley gained major support for his reply because he responded by saying he'd undoubtedly rather having an ape for an ancestor rather than a bishop, or words to that effect. Now to something more serious. How do you think this debate affected the public's understanding and acceptance of Darwin's theory of evolution? If we are to understand this incident at all, we must rid ourselves of the idea that it was an exchange between religion and science. Wilberforce was not presenting his argument from a religious perspective, 
but offering an important and considered critique of Darwin's theory from a scientific perspective. Look, yeah, I agree. Um, since most of the versions that are available are from pro Huxley observers, um, basically they've built the story that Huxley and science experienced a significant victory over Wilberforce. And lastly, what effect has the debate had on the meaning of biblical ideas about the origins of life? Yeah, definitely the different accounts of the debate affected the relationship between science and religion in a negative way. It placed a strain on the argument that science and religion could in fact coexist when they cannot. Mary, what do you have to say? The battle was not necessarily between clerics and scientists, but between generations. The younger generation supporting Darwin and younger scientists and the older generation supporting Wilberforce and conservative scientists. Due to Huxley being seen as the victor, his hatred of biblical creationism was uh, basically made public, which meant the younger generation of scientists who were part of his following were heavily influenced by this. Now, Wilberforce influenced mainly the high church style upper class, but he was also a champion of social justice and a defender of the rights of the poor, meaning that his views spanned across many generations of the public. And the effect on biblical ideas wasn't as great because his arguments came from a scientific perspective rather than from a religious perspective. And that wraps up this afternoon's edition of Debate FM, where we discussed the Huxley Wilberforce debate. Remember to leave any comments on our Facebook forum and enjoy the rest of your Saturday afternoon.